Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Code with Yazid. My name is Yazid and we are looking at the third project for Free Code Camp's JavaScript Algorithms and Data Structures certification. This series is going to cover every project in the certification, so if you do enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. I'm also on Twitter, at YazidB, if you would like to connect. All the links in the source code will be in the video description. So this is project number three. We are doing a Caesar cipher. A Caesar cipher is an encryption technique used to scramble messages. The name comes from Julius Caesar who used the cipher to encrypt his military commands in case they were ever intercepted by the enemy. He would shift every letter in the message a certain number of places, resulting in a, in a new message that seemed meaningless. For a more visual example, let's check out this Caesar Cipher decryption tool that I found online. I will link to it in the video description. Let's say we type in a message. For example, go to the hill. And you can see here, according to this wheel, we can adjust how many spaces we want to offset a given letter. So if you do just one, we can see the wheel rotates. We can see that A becomes B in the new message. So if you type, for example, ABC, and you encrypt that, your new result is BCD. See, every letter got shifted by one place. Let's do it 13 places. See how the wheel rotates, A is N, B is O, C is P, and so on. And if you encrypt now, you have NOP. Okay, and so you can see how 2000 years ago, at least, this was a really effective way to scramble your messages. You can say, go to the hill. I'm just making up some military command you might have had back then. And now, if the enemy were to intercept this message, they would have no idea what to do with it. It doesn't make any sense. So for our challenge, we are going to make a cipher called the ROT13 cipher. And that's actually what this is. Every letter in a message is shifted or rotated by 13 places. ROT13 is short for rotate by 13 places. So how would we implement this? Well, we're going to need the alphabet to start because we're going to look through each letter. And we can see in our input here in the Free Code Camp test cases that we are going to be given only uppercase letters. And we are expected to return only uppercase letters. And all punctuation and spacing is left alone. The alphabet is a list of 26 characters. So why don't we start with this array? We'll only use capital letters because the challenge guarantees that our input will only be uppercase characters. Our function, as we saw here, is going to take a string and it's going to output a string. And the name of it is rot13. So we can say rot13 is a function that takes a string and it returns a new string. And this is a conversion process. So if you watched the previous video where we convert Roman numerals, you know that we use something called an accumulator. Accumulator. And this, as the name implies, is something that accumulates or gradually fills up over time the end result of whatever you're trying to do. So for the Roman numeral converter, we looped through the input and started gradually filling up characters as we converted them. In this case, we're going to take letters from the alphabet and convert them into other letters of the alphabet by rotating each one 13 places. So let's take a look at the input hi, for example. We would use our alphabet here and we would start at H and rot13 says rotate by 13 places. So we would say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So if you rotate H 13 places, you get U. So our accumulator is now U. Now we're going to convert I. We are looping through the string character by character. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We end up at V. So now this becomes V and we would return that accumulator and we are done. What about the string oh no? So this. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to loop character by character. So we'd start with O and we see that it is here. 
and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We've got 11. Rot 13 says you have to move 13 places. We moved 11. That means we have two more jumps to make. So we start over at the alphabet and we do 1, 2. So we see that O under Rot 13 is B. Now the letter H. We've already done H. So we see that if we go to H and jump down 13 places, we get U. Our next character is a space. Spaces and punctuation. So for example, if we had these two, spaces and punctuation are left alone. So we just pass it through, add it to the accumulator without touching it. Now we've reached N. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 places, and we've reached the end of the alphabet. So we have to go back to the top, and we go down here. This makes 13. N becomes A under rot 13. You can see it in the wheel over here. Now we have the letter O again. We know that O is B because we've already converted it before. But let me show you a trick. Instead of starting here, going down to the end of the alphabet, and then looping back up to the top, you can actually subtract 13 and go directly to the letter B. So if we start here and we go minus 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, we get B. And this is going to come in handy when we start writing code. Instead of going to the end and seeing that, oh, hey, now we have to loop back, we can look ahead of time. If we are not going to be able to jump all the way forward, then we'll jump backward. So we have B now, and these two exclamation points, they are not letters, so we can just pass them through, and our accumulator is BU space AB with the two exclamation points. So now that we have our underlying logic, let's see how we can start converting this into JavaScript code. So we created our alphabet, and we needed that, and this is actually just an array. So I think we can take this, and this will be a good start to our function. I'm going to put it outside the function. I'll say const alphabet equals, and it's just going to be all capital letters of the alphabet. Next, we're going to need some type of accumulator. So create accumulator. I'm just going to leave a comment now, no code yet. And what we did here was when we had an input, we looped through every character in the string. So we know that we're going to have to loop through the string. And depending on what character it was, we had different things that we had to do. So if it was a space, or an exclamation point, a question mark, a period. Basically, if it wasn't part of the alphabet, we just left it alone. So we can, we can write an if statement here. I'll indent it. If the character is not a letter, add to the accumulator, just as it is without touching it. Otherwise, we're going to rotate that character by plus or minus 13 places. This is the cipher part of things. This is how we are going to decode any given letter. We're going to see, can we go forward 13 places without crossing over Z? Can we go, like for example, if we have here, we know that we can go down 13 places safely without exceeding our alphabet. But if we start at O, for example, we know that going 13 places takes you over the end. And in JavaScript, if you access an index of an array that's larger than the array itself, you get undefined, and that's going to cause bugs. So if we're this far in the alphabet, if we're too deep in, we are going to go backwards by 13 places, and this is a safe operation. We are guaranteed either plus 13 or minus 13. We will have an answer. So we'll have that contingency, plus or minus 13. Then we will add to the accumulator. And of course, at the very end, always remember to return your output. And now we are ready to start writing some real code. So I'm going to fill in these comments one by one. We're going to create the accumulator first. We'll say let accumulator equal empty string. 
It's always going to start off as an empty string, and as we convert letter by letter, it's going to fill up until we can finally return it as a complete answer. So we're going to create that. Then we are going to loop through the string. This will be a standard for loop for let i equals zero. It's less than string dot length i plus plus. Now, if the character is not a letter, we want to leave it alone and just add it to the accumulator. What's a good way to see if something is a letter? Well, logically speaking, if our character, for example, this space is not in the alphabet array, if it's not included in the alphabet, then we can safely say that it's not a letter and JavaScript has just the method for this. So we can create a variable called is a letter. And all it's going to be is we're going to see alphabet and we're going to look at the includes method. Includes is going to take a string and say if this string is somewhere within the alphabet array, the array of letters, then it is part of the alphabet. It is a letter and this will be true. So we're going to say string i. This is the current character in the string. To make it even clearer, we can actually save it as a variable. Character equals string i. Now we can just say it like this. So if the character is a letter, that means it's included in the alphabet. And so this will be true. So we can say if the character is not a letter or if is a letter equals false, all we're going to do is just add it to the accumulator, add that character to the accumulator without touching it. So if it is a letter, then we are going to rotate that letter by plus or minus 13. The way we're going to do that in JavaScript is we're going to find the index of that character and then just add or subtract 13. So the character index can be found like this. Find index. Find index is going to take a function. Basically, it itself is going to loop through every single letter in the alphabet we're going to give it a comparison function. So we're going to say C equals our character. If our character matches the given letter as this is looping under the hood, it's going to return the index of that character. So this is how we're going to find it. So for example, with this, if you give it A, it's going to give you back 0. If you give it Z, it's going to give you back 25. This is the index of each character in the array. And then all we have to do is add that rotated letter to the accumulator. So we're going to add to it either the alphabet at that index plus 13 or the alphabet at that index minus 13. Like we said before, if you go too far in an array, if we said, for example, so this is at index 25, if we said, for example, index 26, we would get back undefined. So this would become undefined. And then using the or syntax, we can kick in this as a backup. So we're basically saying, if a letter at this index plus 13 does not exist, then go backwards by 13 and it should definitely exist. And now we've added that. And if I just come down here and uncomment this and we run our unit tests and it looks like everything passes. So let's quickly review this solution one more time. We have the entire alphabet, uppercase only, defined outside of our function, so we don't have to recreate it every single time. Then we have our rot13 function, which will rotate a given string's characters by 13 places. We create the accumulator. This is what will be returned as the final output. It's empty at first, and we fill it up over time. As we loop over the string, we're going to capture each given character. If it is part of the alphabet, we're just going to add it to the accumulator. No questions asked, no transformations done. 
otherwise, we're going to find the index of that character, see where it is in the alphabet. Then we'll try to add 13 to that character index. And if that doesn't work, we'll back up and try going backwards 13. One or the other has to give us a valid letter of the alphabet. Then at the very end, return the accumulator that we've been building up throughout this loop, and we are done. I hope this was fun and informative. I hope this made sense. Please uh, reach out to me on Twitter if you have any questions. All the links will be in the description and the source code for this challenge. I hope to see you next time. Take care.